I don't want this. I, I want to stop hurting. The United States contributes approximately 80% of the global opioid uh, prescription supply. We're just recognizing this is a huge problem. It affects all of us. Blacked out and forgetting whole days. The majority of supply of these misused prescription opioids are coming from legally written prescriptions. It's bad for society. It's terrible for society. Almost all of the world's opioids are consumed in the United States alone, and Americans account for the use of approximately 99% of one specific opioid, a powerful painkiller called hydrocodone. And now those statistics are grabbing the attention of politicians, patients, and physicians like never before. It's killing the country. It's taken kids as young as 13. It's taken people that are 65 and 70 years old. They're getting addicted. They have no idea how to stop. Recovering addict Bobby Long is one of the faces behind a shocking statistic. About 80% of all opioid medications, the most addictive of painkillers, is consumed by Americans. If you look at the sheer numbers, you'd think we were in more pain than anyone else in the world. Opioid prescriptions have skyrocketed. And we have currently nearly 250 million prescriptions for opioids written every year. That's enough for every adult in America to have a bottle of pills and then some. And those opioids are part of a $24 billion prescription painkiller market. The top five opioid products based on 2015 sales were made by Purdue Pharma, Johnson & Johnson, Insys Therapeutics, Mylan, and Depamed. But new regulations in the pain market can impact sales. For instance, in 2014, when the DEA reclassified the painkiller hydrocodone because of its potential risk of abuse from a Schedule 3 to a Schedule 2 drug, there was a 27% decline in sales from 2013 to 2015. So drugs like Vicodin, for example, can't be administered as freely as they were before. Patients now have to bring a physical prescription to a pharmacy in order to get it filled. Although stricter rules have been put in place, some say it's not enough, especially considering that in most other parts of the world, these drugs are prescribed for severe pain, like post-trauma, burns, or after surgery. In the U.S., more and more physicians and companies are coming under fire for trying to push their highly addictive opioids onto patients with minor injuries or illnesses. The majority of supply of these misused prescription opioids are coming from legally written prescriptions. Lawmakers and other government organizations say that's in part to blame for the prescription painkiller epidemic gripping the nation. I mean, almost everybody has somebody they know personally, a family member, a friend, an acquaintance, a neighbor who's been affected by this. It's an American problem. I was a guy that sold millions of dollars in real estate and had the corner house in Naples, Florida with the wife and the two new cars. I was that guy. And addiction doesn't care. Addiction will take anything from anyone. Bobby Long had been sober for about eight years and life was good until he had neck surgery. They prescribed me low dose um, oxycodone. Oxycodone is a powerful opioid, a painkiller. Shortly after, he was hooked. I burned through a 30-day prescription in about a week, and then I started getting sick. I didn't know why, and then I figured out I'm getting sick because I'm withdrawn. So he found a doctor, like so many other Americans do, who helped feed his addiction. The way I found this doctor was other people telling me, other people that were in and out of recovery, oh, if you go to this doctor, he'll write you whatever you want. And that's causing lawmakers to come up with solutions to try to reduce America's addiction to opioids. The Government Accountability Office discovered in a single year about 170,000 Medicare beneficiaries were doctor shopping, which is the term for going to multiple doctors to get the same opioid prescriptions and then going to multiple pharmacies, getting them all filled. Which is why the tool Lock-In is now used by Medicaid and many private insurers. It locks the patient into a single doctor and pharmacy so prescriptions can be more easily tracked. Legislation was recently passed to add Medicare to the Lock-In program. The Congressional Budget Office estimated that it'll save taxpayers about $100 million a year, which is not insignificant. Opioid abuse is wreaking havoc on the economy as well, costing the U.S. about $55 billion, almost half 
of that due to loss of productivity in the workplace. Clearbrook Treatment Centers provides care for many patients who are addicted to painkillers. We are always, always filled, which says a lot about society, unfortunately. Richard Conaboy knows all too well, a recovering addict himself, sober for decades, now the vice president of clinical services here. We have a lot of union people, truck drivers, whatever, who come through here and started out with pain pills and stepped down to heroin. Down? Down to heroin because the pills became too expensive. So they actually stepped down to heroin, which sounds ridiculous. Ridiculous maybe, but a sad reality for far too many. Dina Gosofsky, CNBC Business News. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.